Welcome to the bold analysis. I want us to listen to something that John Buddy is actually exposing to Kenyans about what normally goes wrong. And according to him, he's actually raising an alarm that is very important for us to take a break from the other political discussions and look at Kindi because we are really not, it is a, is a question that has been so much, um, Kenyans have really been uh, wondering about and I want us to look at it keenly. I want us to look this uh, matter keenly. Kindly subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell and like our video. I want to start by saying thank you very much for those who support us from different parts of the country. John Buddy is the chairman of the Public Accounts Committee in the National Assembly and a seasoned legislator. And being that that is a body that um, looks audit queries on government expenditure because it's one of the most important oversight committee in the National Assembly, he's raising a fundamental question on the accountability of government expenditure. John Buddy is asking Treasury and the Kenya Kwanza administration why there was a mad rush to reshuffle finance uh, officials from the finance departments in different ministries uh, within the government, a situation that has derailed um, uh, effort to get responses as far as the audit queries are concerned, are concerned, and but it has told the oversight role of the National Assembly to question the expenditure. While speaking yesterday, John Buddy is saying that immediately after KK came into power, there was a mad reshuffle of the finance, uh, uh, different officials from the finance departments and by the treasury in what was perhaps seen as usual restructure and transfer of officials from one uh, ministry to the other. But that mad rush has created a challenge. And he's saying a situation where in a ministry senior most official finance uh, head and the deputy all are not in office. So maybe they have been moved or they have been moved, all of them have been moved and in that uh, sense you realize that those who have taken over the ministries maybe are junior officers or just people who are new and they are not privy to what happened previously. In fact, according to John Buddy, because of moving officials, um, st that strategic move, they're finding it difficult to get important documents as far as audit queries are concerned. I know that's a common practice that um, even if office holder leave, the documents are supposed to be there. But you cannot wipe away the personal responsibility or rather what the effectiveness of getting these documents, especially when the person who was in charge is in office. Somebody is saying that there are situations where the head and the deputy have all been moved. Those who are remaining there are junior officers who either do not know or rather they are not furnished by those documents and again they can also not appear. So you realize that when you ask for documents A, document B, those who are supposed to give feedback do not have the feedback. They do not have that response because they are not. And according to him, this is a loophole that has extensively been exploited to stall audit queries as far as um, 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 uh, spending, government spending is concerned. Now, when speaking, He's saying that in some instances, officials have allegedly been moved from one ministry to the other, one as a way of 
punishing them after some delicate leak of um, maybe some documents. Or number two, some are also moved to seal leakage of critical documents that will then uh, be used in audit queries. So, in, in what Mbadi is saying, he's actually asking, why are we moving? Why is it, why it's becoming difficult even to probe some of these uh, spending habits that are going on is because they cannot furnish, uh, those who are supposed to furnish them cannot furnish them with those documents. Either you're bringing in new people, those who are moving out, so the ones who are there are supposed to give some leak, are supposed to give information, they cannot give because they don't have it. So it's, first, it's blocking leakage. Number two, that those who might have deliberately done that and because someone now feels that you are not in conformity with the system, you have to be moved to a dry span, maybe a ministry that you do not have a lot of activities that has less, less rigidity. So we, this, is, this is a discussion that Mbad is talking about. I decided to pick it because we can, you know, the public or rather Kenyans can always think that things are going on, but in real sense, there are quite a number of underhand deals going on, but they can't be known because the system has found um, um, different, different strategies of sealing the loopholes. I, yesterday, I analyzed about the Belarus document, uh, the Belarus deal, and I realized the writer, it was in Nation, the Nation team could not explain as to, they tried to contact the bank that is giving the loan, and the bank manager says, I don't have any idea. In fact, Belarus is a small shareholder in the Said Bank. So the, there is a lot of secrecy in some of the projects going on or some of the deals that government is putting their foot forward. So this is something that is going on. Now, secondly, <laughs> you know, there is another shocking one here that in some instances, the state officials are paid allowances in the tune of millions over what is called as extra working hours, where they work extra working hours, number two, is on fuel consumed on official duties. I know there is per diem, fuel and all that, but it's saying that there is this loophole that is highly used. Number one, when someone works overtime, What's overtime? How many hours? How many hours extra? Let's look at it. But then, why would we even take that to people to gobble millions? Government working hours is from 8 to 5. Anything beyond that maybe is on, on, on a foreign mission or something. But then we need to sell the loopholes because, according to what Mbadi is saying, the instances where documents are not supportive documents of someone working extra hours, are not available. And again, there are those who say that uh, a government vehicle goes, is used in Mombasa, he takes his own money and buys fuel, then is refunded. Now what is shocking here is that fuel is in the tune of millions. Who have one million? Who can spend one million in fuel in a single day? Atacama, you are within, even where we are. Can it go to one million? I know that uh, the government machineries are very huge gazelers, but it can't gobble that kind of money. So, um, Bandi is trying to raise the eyebrows. And in this country, I have always said, there is a lot of messaging and communication on how others are not spending or, or, or how, how corruption in the past has been. But I've been taking and I've been giving a challenge that instead of even wasting more effort on energy, by the way, um, in, instead of wasting our energy on the past, we just need to utilize what we have and seal loopholes because there is a lot of pilferage that is going on. The reason why we are going to spiral on the question of wage bill and ultimately we cannot solve it is because we cannot make brave decisions that are needed. There are some unpopular decisions that we must make as a country. And President William Ruto must make those decisions. For example, why should we pay, why should, I've always not understood, 
an MP is having a monthly salary, is having a house allowance, uh, maybe let's look at some insurance. Some even have insurance. They have privilege. They have many privileges. Why should we pay a sitting allowance to an MP whose work is to sit in the National Assembly to make laws for the country? His work is to sit in the National, National Assembly. And again, when he goes there, we also have to pay him sitting allowance. You know, we know very well that MPs play two roles. The first sitting, uh, making laws. But again, they are also developing the eye of the government in terms of development at the constituency level. They are managing to some millions under the CDF, Constitution Development Fund. So, of course, they move. But at the end of the day, you will realize a situation where in National Assembly, an allowance. Uko kwa county, uh, uko kwa constituency, that CDF, he also gobbled some allowance when he was going and coming back. Then you find out yourself. In fact, you know, I normally like my good friend, Tebi, we once worked with that lady. She, we could go for an interview, and people normally have this tabi hour. And when you go to interview, especially some expert will tell you, why didn't you, pre why didn't you prepare me? Give me 30 minutes. Give me one hour. I want to prepare. Send me the questions. Tell me what you want to ask. Toby will face them in the eye and ask them, why should we give you leakages on how we are going to ask you while well, we are going to ask you things that you do, uh, issues that, or other topics of matters you deal with daily. This is your work. Any time, especially when you go to government, you'll say, this is your work. Like If you go to chief, chief, we want your commentary on this. You can't tell us to wait, give you minutes. Or, this is your work. You're not going to give you time. You either just give us the interview or you don't. And, you know, we realized that some people didn't feel very comfortable with the table, but Tebi was very honest on that. We must start here. President William Ruto must scrap <coughs> allowances. We must review those allowances because we have exorbitant figures of the taxpayers' money being gobbled in those allowances. And it's one of the ways to swindle the money from the taxpayer. Now, in the question of moving um, the personnel question, it is about time that President himself commissions a fresh audit of human personnel in ministries, and this should be based on competencies to review the security of tenure and transfer policies. This has been misused. I, won't, I even believe the same way we're having a discussion on transfer of teachers. You know, I know there's a discussion on teachers should teach in places where they can even be teaching their mother tongue to protect the culture of those regions in conformity to the UNESCO's policies. We've seen police, people can just be reshuffled at any time for the convenience. Now that's also happening internally. And why would we should have it? Because it's a window that is being used to seal corruption loopholes. We should agree. Why should we move if I was employed in the Ministry of Interior? Why should you move me after some three years or so to another ministry while Simonimu, you know, is still there? If there is something comes, coming up, then, then people just move that way. We are really sealing a uh, graft move. So if we mean well in graft, and I'm very specific, if we mean well, deploy high intelligence to intercept illicit transactions if we can find graft. I remember President Uhuru Kenyatta was really um, criticized, but I'm told the procurement, finance departments could not make payments. They even feared making payments. And that's why probably they say we are really struggling with pending bills is because this year you make payment, this year was on your, in your Adele. Trying to uh, ask more well, who has been paid, what about it and what about it. So we need to have high vigilance. And I think I don't support man marking of people, you know, man marking of officials, it's just a will to and everyone is working under some sort of some fright. No. But we should have high intelligence. Because if such a report can come, then it only points out that there is a deliberate effort to seal a lot of information that will leak to the public. And again, it's a public office as as uh, as um, as Mbadi was asking. Why should we have even things that are not supposed to? Those documents are supposed to be public documents. Yes. We know there is security, 
But then, quite a number like these ones that are needed in the National Assembly are documents that should be public documents, that even media can be can, can get them, can, can, they can be availed to media and the media can use them. So we need to have that transparency. And in fact, if President Tutu wants to fight graft, you must put that transparency so that if there is a corruption, it's better it's intercepted, it's better it's said out there, it comes out there publicly in media. By the time ministry tattoo, you see a bit of that shrinking going on. Corruption can sink this country. People think about mass action. Forget about the fact that economy can stall if we go if people go to the street. Corruption can sink Kenya Kwanza. It can. It can. The, if we must, if we mean well, we cannot spiral about on the problem. We must find a solution. If you mean well for corruption, I can tell you. What Mbadi is saying, corruption can sink. The great ambitions that we have for the beautiful country called Kenya. That's my point.